Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Ronich, of Statewide News Service, jbiztechvalley.com. As you can see here, columnist for the Jewish Press. I'm having a lot of fun doing all of that, and I write my column, Albany Beat, about uh, how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. And one person who does relate to the Jewish community very well is our first guest, Jim Tedisco, assemblyman, He's currently the assemblyman from... Uh, Glenville and covers connection. 112th South Assembly County, District. 112th Assembly District, yada, yada, yada. I like Welcome. to say all good things emanate from the 112th Assembly <laughs> District. Well, that could be, considering you're the Assemblyman and yes. soon to be State Senator. Well, we keep our fingers crossed. Oh, don't on. don't jinx me no, now. Come on. <laughs> we always say in Jewish, im yertz Hashem, which means if God wants. That's so, right. You have to have God's well, help for everything. And I should say, welcome back to the Jewish view there because you go. you've been on here yes. before, which means we treated you nicely enough where you wanted to come back. Well, I even come <laughs> back when they treat me mean because oh, yeah. <laughs> I can dodge those tomatoes pretty good. I've oh. had a lot of practice. In the meantime, you were the you are the assemblyman, and the session is over for the last half a year. That's. Your work is a half year work in the assembly. How did it go? Well, it didn't go well. Oh. It was a status quo. You know, status we, quo we did the same thing. There's one, the status quo. <laughs> it's a good one, Mark. Uh, we had the same processes that we've had before. And uh, in fact, we've kind of regressed. You know, we had the two big guys, Mr. Skelos and Mr. Silver, who got in some serious trouble. Really, a partially their fault, no question about it. They took an oath of office. But the system lends for that when rank-and-file members don't want to be real representatives. And Preet Bahara, as you know, said the two most important things they were able to do is have unbridled power, first of all, and a lack of oversight and transparency. We gave them an opportunity to take care of that unbridled power and take some back, change it to a real representative democracy instead of what seems to be a kingship right now, and have real oversight and the ability to get legislation through rank-and-file members to the floor for discussion, debate, and vote. And that was my spirit of 76 piece of legislation. Which I wrote about. You did, and you were at the press conference, and you saw you know, the support we had. I, I, and it's pretty my, much common sense. My lead was, you know, when is 76 not half of 150? That's right. And it was when the assembly does the counting. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, it makes eminent sense to say if 76 individuals of the assembly, or 32, which is a majority of the Senate, sponsor a piece of legislation, that's over 50% in both houses. That's a majority of representation of the 19.5 million people of New York State. We feel it should bypass the powerful leaders who right now can hold up every piece of legislation or powerful committee people and bring to the floor for discussion, debate, and a vote. We don't say it has to pass, but we say these important ethics bills should get to the floor. We did one ethic bill that we got through in terms yeah. of corruption. That was the pension bill, which, don't get me wrong, it's an important piece of legislation. Pension forfeiture bill. Pen pension revocation and forfeiture bill. Okay. You should not be able to keep your pension if you're convicted of a felony like Sheldon Silver or, or Dean Skellis was right. convicted. They're going to be sentenced. Why should they get taxpayers' now, dollars for the rest of their life? They may not be sentenced. Well, Did you I, hear read today? I, I heard today that really has very little to do with oh, their with their issues. See, One that's of, what I wasn't sure about. Yeah. What you some of the you top know. legal minds say uh, their lawyers may have been using that, but it isn't really representative of the things well, that they as, did. As Rabbi Simon would tell me at this point, tell the audience what you're talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's Governor Bob McDonald from Virginia, former governor right. from Virginia, uh, was involved with a theft for services right. where he took money and he. Uh, Benefit, which benefited uh, a certain company down in Virginia, and it was pay to play. Yeah, and but now the U.S. Supreme Court ruled today that he was acquitted of that I because guess. of his actions. Now his actions right. were he met with individuals on some of these things, and he was talking about specific issues as they related to government, and they had given him some uh, rewards or some dinners and some luncheons, some things of that nature. What Sheldon Silver and Dean Skellis did, Dean Skellis made a deal with a business to give his son a job mm. for an opportunity to get contracts. Mm -hmm. Sheldon Silver made a quid pro quo directly. We're going to give you money for this non-for-profit. You're going to give me the services back so I can take these clients in terms of asbestos and its negative impact on creating cancer. And I'm going to give it to these attorneys that I work with for legal work, and they will kick back to me. Maybe so that was making, a specific plan, basically. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe in the most, uh, making very short for our audience, it's mostly direct or indirect. Right. Indirect, you know, you do me a favor, and then down the line, 
something you happens. A favor, something happens, so that's indirect favor. But if you say, hey, do this for me and I'll do this for right. you, that's more direct, which would be our case in New York. They had a lot of uh, emails and letters, but for Skellis, they actually had uh, telephone wire work. <laughs> So well, they, his son had the conversations. Saying, yeah, his son was saying, you know, the, uh, that Preparahara might be, be listening to this, and he was. Sure. So. <laughs> but we have several other pieces, and this is what I was starting to well, talk wait, about at the I, beginning. Yeah, but I wanted to ask you, the pension forfeiture law, did that pass the Senate also? Yeah, passed both houses. So is the governor likely to sign it? I believe he would be likely to sign it. I think it's the, suicide if he doesn't, doesn't because right? that's <laughs> the one thing people want. But they want a lot of other things, too. They want term limits for these powerful leaders. Because when you're there for 20 or 21 years, like Sheldon Silver was, you can consolidate power as a powerful leader. Okay? Rank and file members don't have that particular power well, right but now. But you were a leader in the right? Republican side. Three and, years. And you were there 32 years or something like that. Not as a leader. Three years no. as a leader. Three years yeah. as a leader, right. And then 34 years as a member. Right. Total. So... Well, rank and file is, is, doesn't have the power that the leadership has. But wouldn't you have term limited yourself and wouldn't you have deprived? Oh, yeah. yeah for, and then we wouldn't have had all those wonderful bills that you got passed and constitutional amendments and, you know, with the... Uh, well, I would term limit myself for 12 years, but that means the whole body has to be term limited. Yeah, you can't term limit yourself individually. But you wouldn't have had enough time to get that uh, re uh, paper reduction bill uh, through as a constitutional amendment. But we would have got rid of a lot of guys that weren't doing the right thing. That's the problem with, with our system in New York State. So, yeah. You know, initially I was against term limits because uh, that's a way of taking away the power of the people. Right. They should be able to decide. But when you won't make the other adjustments that are circular around that, then you have to have term limits because it's not just throwing the, the baby out with the bathwater. It's getting the bad babies out with the bathwater. So in New York State, until we make what I was getting to, yes. Uh, not only term limits, LLC reform, where we don't know who is sponsoring this money or they can give uh, unbridled amounts of money. Uh, the particular bill of limiting uh, bundling, you know what bundling is? No, for I those who are watching don't, don't know what bundling is, we have a certain level of how much we can receive as donations. Now, somebody who goes out and gets 500 people to give that level of donation in a check then takes those $500 checks or, or 500 checks with $4,000, let's say, the limit, and gives it to a governor or a leader and says, well, I've only given you one check, but I went out and got 500 checks of $4,000, that person's going to have some extra special power. Even though he didn't give the money or she didn't, right. she went out and got, it, got the money. That's bundling. We have to limit, I think, how much of that can be done. And, of course, Pedro Espada never filed his election results. Uh, of fundraising. Oh. And we have to have a penalty for that when that doesn't happen because you don't know where they're getting the money from. It's campaign finance. Campaign point. finance yeah. filing. Yeah. And uh, we have a bill that says uh, uh, when you're warned three times, you have 30 days. If not, it becomes a misdemeanor and you could actually go to jail for not filing that important information. And then I think we have to have recall in New York State. I really do think 20 other states have it. You know, my mom used to say to me when I misbehaved, Jimmy, I brought you into this world. Right. I'll take you out of this yeah. world. The people of New York State have given us the honor to serve them. They brought us into this world. When they see they're dissatisfied, that we haven't lived up to our oath of office, that we look at their own dollars as their own, or their own personal piggy bank, mm. they should have the right to go out and petition and take them out without waiting for this long process of going through the judiciary. They should have recall in New York State. It's very popular in the individuals I talk with. Well, yeah, and California had recall. I yep, mean, 20 other states mm -hmm. have recall. Wow. So, you know, that would be a lot of reform. Now, if you get elected to the Senate, then you'll be hopefully maybe in the majority. I there. hope so. Uh, if you're in the majority, you'll still be as outspoken as you were in the Assembly? Uh? I hope I will. That's what I'm there to, to be, to stand up for our constituents. You know, I had a long talk with the Mr. Skellis before I decided, or not Mr. <laughs> Mr. Flynn again, again? Yes. before I decided to run for this position. Okay. And I sat down, I said, you know Jim Tedisco, he's independent. He's going to vote the way he thinks. I respect you, but you won't tell me how to vote. The conference won't tell me how to vote. When I get back to my constituents and listen to them in Herkimer, Fulton, mm -hmm. Hamilton County, Schenectady, and Saratoga, that would guide me how to vote. And if that's a problem for you, I'll shake hands right now. Mm -hmm. I'll walk out of the room. This is exactly what I said to him. He shook my hand. He said, I know Jim Tedisco. I know he's an independent, and I want to prove to you I'll be a good leader for the entire state. I said, that'll be remain to be seen on both sides, but I'll, I, I decide to run after that. Because, but that uh, didn't say that he would let you be independent. 
No, but he knows where I stand. Well, yeah. he was a member in the Assembly, Republican Conference in the Assembly, when you were leader, maybe? Or? No, he left no. Uh, before that. Before that, okay. Yeah. So he Charlie knows. Nesbitt was his leader when he was there. So you know, the, uh, you know each other as colleagues in the oh, same yeah. conference. He's very bright. So He's very personal. I think he could be a great leader. Uh, but no, he has but I'm just saying he, that's when he, how he knows you and not just in passing or seeing your name in a newspaper. Oh, yes. The two of you were in the same conference and discussing legislation at the same time and you know he knows your personality yeah. very well sure so. well like you said he knows I'm outspoken okay and uh, I, well I told him this I said look some things are going to change I'll be in a different venue I'll be in the Senate I'll be, have a different district I'll have more constituents to serve but I said one thing won't change and that's Jim Tedisco I'll always stand up for only one group and those are the people that gave me the honor to serve them in whatever capacity they put me in, whether it was the Assembly or the Senate. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the 49th Senatorial District, as you know, is beautiful territory, some of it very rural, the Adirondacks, but we also have the city and county of Schenectady and, and Saratoga. And basically, all of my uh, Assembly District, Boston, Charlton, Milton, Galway, Providence, uh, well, Clifton all, Park. All, all those communities are listed on the final panel of the show. There you go. I did that for Edinburgh, Hadley, and Day, you know them all. In several towns and villages up in the Herkimer, Fulton, and uh, yeah. Hamilton County. Now, you know Hamilton County is the second largest, no, the first largest land-wise land -wise yeah. in, the, in the state. First or second, it's well, very close. I think St. Lawrence County might be yeah, larger. Or, but, yeah, or out west where uh, Senator Young could be. But uh, you know what the population is of right. Hamilton County? Mm -hmm. 4,500 4, to 5,000 yeah, yeah. constituents. And they're all in the southern part of the county, right. mostly. Well, there's but the Adirondack Forest. I mean, yeah, it's uh, the beginning of the Adirondack well, Forest. Long Lake, Indian yeah. Lake, and it goes most beautiful the, territory, but beautiful the, Adirondacks. But the Hamilton County uh, triples in size or quadruples in size in the summer months. Oh, yes. Tourism. All the tourism. Tourism is paid. They got so, snowmobiling out there, a lot yeah. of water sports, fishing, hunting. So, but most of the year round population is in the southern part, the f southern third of the district, of right. the county. Right. It's a very long county that uh, yeah. looks like a finger going up. Yeah. <laughs> so, starts with Fulton, goes up to Hamilton, then you, know. you got Herkimer. But uh, great territory. I love being out there. Uh, two and a half hour ride out to the edge of it. A lot of gasoline. No. I think, think I spent more gas in seven weeks than I had for a whole year. And here you go. You're going into a district that's three times the size of your assembly district, and you're getting the paid the same amount of money. Really, the Senate gets the same yeah. as much as the assembly. Sure. Seventy nine five. Sure. I didn't know that. I thought they so, got more. Well, you've got to love what you do. You know, I also had to talk with my wife. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You know, you when did. I talk with my wife, she looked at me. and She said, "Let me get this straight." You're out of the house half the time right now. This district you have is five times oh. bigger than your present assembly district. Are you ever going to come home again? <laughs> and I, I, I told a little joke, which I shouldn't do. You shouldn't do this with your wife. I said, well, I'll give you 45 minutes a day, dear. <laughs> the smoke start coming out of her yeah. ear. So you know what she said to me? 45 minutes, you can mow the front lawn, then you can leave again, she said. Yeah. <laughs> so it took me two dozen roses to get that straightened I out with her. Yeah, but sure. finally, after our discussion, she said, you love being a representative, don't you? You love going and standing up. And she knew up. that when she married. You. Yeah, standing up in, in, up to the most powerful elements in state government. You know, uh, Elliot Spitzer, he was an effing steamroller. He was going right. to roll over me That's and everybody right. that got in his way. I said, no, you're not. We love immigration in this state, nation, in, in this state. That's the hallmark of what built this great country. It's diversity. Our grandfathers, great-grandfathers came well, here, helped legal build it. Legal immigration. Legal immigration. That's right. the point. And I said, no citizen who breaks the law expects to be rewarded for it. So there's a process for this. And we want to build it and make it greater. And so that was the argument we had. And then with the... Sheldon Silver, as you know, yeah. I walked right up to him in his own press conference and said, look, we need to talk about the property and property taxes. It's too high in this state. And he goes, well, this is my room. I said, no, it's a public's room. And I said, you, you also think that the public's tax dollars is your own personal piggy bank. And uh, I authored the first property tax cap to get our foot in the door. What did he say to that? He, no, was he was, how long ago was that? Oh, that's on tape. Go to my website and you'll see it. Uh, see we're it? using that for commercials right oh, now. Oh, really? Because uh, a lot of guys talk the talk. Yeah, they put out the press door. releases yeah. and things like that. I like to go face to people face to face. No, I know that. I didn't go up to him when he was handcuffed behind his back in front of a judge. 
He was the most powerful leader we had yes. there. He was on the border of being the longest tenured speaker in the history of New York State. And you know who he would have succeeded in? Oswald D. Heck. Heck from Schenectady. From Schenectady. You know, there so. were two leaders from Schenectady in the history. I was the minority leader, and Oswald D. Heck was the majority leader, for uh, a speaker for right. 20 years. Right. He has the record. That's and right. Knock on and wood. Silver was shy maybe about a year or so? Or yeah, he just, he just missed it. Yeah. He'll have the longest tenured in the, uh, no, the Democrat. prison commissary. Oh, okay. when he gets yeah. there. <laughs> now, Jim, how old are you now? I'll be uh, 66 coming up. 66? Yeah. So, you know, how, uh, you, you could, I mean, Hugh Farley is in his 80s. You could be in the Senate in another 20 years. Well, I wouldn't do that, you know. I, you, another way I feel about it, from the very first day I got elected to this morning when I woke up, I've got that churning in my stomach ready to stand up. You never know what you're going to have to battle against to protect the quality of life of the people you represent. And that's what a representative is, ready to do battle, but also ready to support sponsor on a bipartisan way anything that's good for your constituents. Mm -hmm. I think I told you about the time uh, Mario Cuomo, I called up his office when I was chairman of the task force on missing children. I had an idea and I said I'd like to make oh, our yes. yep, our transportation system, the state throughway, uh, the first uh, transportation system in the state to help track down missing children. Put their pictures on throughway toll tickets. And I told you about two hours they gave me a call the very next day they said meet the governor on exit 23, we're going to print the first pictures of a missing child and we're going to put them on the throughway toll ticks. I'll be a son of a gun. He showed up. We went in the booth. I've got uh, pictures of him and me. It was in yeah. the newspaper and everything. And I said, Governor, why did you come? And he said, I'm from a different party. I'm a, a young legislator. He said, because of the character, the content, and the quality of an idea. And this was a good idea. And we found the first child in Sarah, in Sarah, no, okay. Buffalo, we found her, that we put on that picture uh, of missing, missing wow. children. And he also said something else I'll never forget. Uh, he said, we're going to have a press conference. You know why? I said, why? Because if a politician doesn't blow his own horn, right. no one else will. there's never any music, he said. What I took that to mean, and when you're in the minority especially, you've got to get the facts out. You've got to stand up. You've got to have your dots, uh, eyes dotted and your T's crossed, and you've got to make the case. And I made the case, as you know, about that proposition, too, to go digital. Mm -hmm. uh, that was unprecedented that a minority uh, member of any body out there could work through for two successive sessions, get that proposition to pass. For those who are listening, that was on the ballot Watching. to go digital mm -hmm. and uh, put those tablets uh, on our table and take all that paper off there, be right. more efficient, save $13 million. I got Denny Field to admit it was $13 million in paper and keep that ink-filled paper out of landfills and keep our trees standing. Do you know what they call those tablets now on our desk? To disco tablets? Jimmy's. Jimmy's? Yep. Okay. You but, raise your hand. Hey, my Jimmy's not. Interesting. Now. You know, you're a Republican, we all know, and I, you know, the aura that you get Republican and you're stagnant and you don't care about the environment, I guess it's just mm -hmm. the opposite. And you're just the opposite of that. I know that you care about animal rights, and here you're talking about, you know, the saving trees. So yeah. I guess it's a bad rap that um, I'm mean, especially you would be getting. Well, I mean, you're. I, I mean, you, well, I don't know if you're a liberal, but those are liberal no, issues. That you're not a liberal. I don't think I, I can. Not a liberal, I'm not a liberal. But, I don't think you can be pigeonholed if you're doing the right thing. Some things are just good for everybody, whether you're a liberal or conservative. Uh, Republican or Democrat, no matter what you are. And I like to see if an issue is good for the majority of my constituents. And if it is, I never ask one of my constituents if they call my office, what's your affiliation so I could help right, you right, right. as an ombudsman? And I think that's, we're representatives. We have to represent everybody. And you talked about animal issues. That's well, a very, we had our sixth wait, animal advocacy wait, day. Yeah, I know. Before you get into that for a second, I guess, uh, when, with the, uh, I don't want to take anything credit away from you because you did bring up that, you know, the computers and all that. But didn't the Democrat have to carry that legislation? Oh, yeah. We have no pride of authorship So who there. was the Democrat actually carrying? Uh, I believe it was Galef. Yeah. Sandy Galef. Yeah. Who we had on the show, she was part of the coup of Shelley Silver. Coup yeah. in yeah. 2000. Yeah. So she wasn't exactly, but she carried the bill. Well, the coup so, took a little while. You know, everybody was defending no, him no, for a saying, couple weeks until <laughs> they started to stab him in the back. When they saw he was going over the cliff, you know, there's not much loyalty amongst thieves over there. You know what I mean? But, but yeah, you know, listen, listen. what kids would get thrown out of Union College when I was going there for plagiarism uh, is an accepted practice in New York State. But I don't have a pride of authorship. I can give you a litany of lists of ideas I put forth, put other people's names on it. But you know what? 
when it comes to Buster's Law for animal cruelty, making it a felony, Proposition 2, uh, stopping the thruway authority from a 45% trucking toll increase. Right. You know what that would have meant? Every time you go to the grocery store, the cost of an orange, a tomato, your municipal roadways would be ruined because they jump off the throughway and start driving through municipal roadways. They wouldn't have a hearing in the capital district. I stood up to the leaders over there and said, you won't have a hearing? I'll have my own hearing. I had all the business groups in, the citizens tree in, for, uh, the good taxpayer groups. Governor Como said, rescind that 45, and he fired all the executives. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I did. Fired all the executives in the thruway because he, he said that is a pass through 45%. We promised the constituents, and this is another thing that upsets me. When they built that thruway, by the end of the 1990s, no more tolls. It's going to be free. 86. Yeah. 56 to 86, a 30 year mm -hmm. bond. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. I thought it was into and the. Moynihan was the one who I remember saying we should have the tolls off in 1986. Right. Well, we made a promise that we'd do it. And they didn't. And when government doesn't follow through with their promises, that's bad. That's why we've lost a lot of faith. And that's the one thing why this ethics and this corruption thing is so important. They have a tendency to paint everybody with a broad brush. And uh, that's why we've got to stand up, rank and file members, and have a revolt. I call it uh, the spirit of 76 right. revolt. Yeah. 76 members, it should be both sides of the And by the way, at the end of the night here, when we went back to the bad old days of this budget, 5.15 mm -hmm. a.m. Yeah. in the morning, mm -hmm. we did this bill. Mm -hmm. Well, the public wasn't around, the fourth estate, the media wasn't around, uh, legislators weren't around because they were sleeping on chairs. Yes, they were. We saw pictures. Yeah. I was one of the first, uh, only ones with a few other guys who st stayed awake. I took a lot of no-dose to make <laughs> yeah. sure I could try to read the bills. But by the way, if they don't let you read the bill, why would a representative vote for or against the bill if they don't let him read it? I know you can't vote for it. And these messages of necessity, they're messages of political expediency. You shouldn't pass a $150 billion budget with a message of necessity which puts aside the three-day waiting period that our founding fathers put in place. They put it in there for a reason. So you could read the bills. And, you know, I appreciate anybody who wants to jump into the field of public service, and even Nancy Pelosi. But Nancy Pelosi was wrong when she said you have to pass the bill to know what's in the bill. A multi-billion dollar health care bill, you have to pass it to find out. No, that was a wrong statement. You have to read the bill. You have to debate the bill. You have to be a real representative. And that's why my colleagues are more lemmings going over a cliff than really embracing that spirit of 76, that revolution, which I think you're seeing taxpayers involved with right now, the way this presidential thing is going. They're not happy with either one of the candidates, and I don't blame them. The negatives for Hillary Clinton and uh, Donald Trump are about as high as the final game of the combined scores of the NBA championship, okay? <laughs> and that's unprecedented to do see you, that much negative. And you, you saw what happened in England recently. You, I want to get back to animals, but did you, do you have a preference, uh, speaking of animals, between uh, Clinton or Trump? Or? Well, let me put it this way. When I walked in to vote, I asked if I could do a write-in and put my name in. Okay. <laughs> okay. Would you vote Libertarian for Governor Johnson? I don't think I would do that because that would uh, probably give us four more years of Barack Obama, and I don't think we can withstand really? because four more years. Don't we need a third party? No, because what a third party will, will give is just, uh, you can't win in a third party. All you can do is take votes maybe from one or the other other major candidates. I think what we need is uh, real people in, in the two major parties. I'm not opposed to other parties being involved, but they have to really represent their constituents, and that's what the offensiveness is right now. You, you've got both sides who don't seem to want to follow. You saw it in uh, England recently. Yeah, well where they got out of the union there. They yeah. decided, we want to take our country back. Either solve the problem of immigration, do it right, provide legal immigration, and that's great if they do, because we love more cultural right. uh, help here, more, more diversity. But you've got to do it right. We're in a state right now where people don't want to just kill us, these terrorists, or blow up our buildings. They want to destroy the concept of what America is all about, its foundation. They want to destroy freedom and liberty. When you see this individual who walked in that LGBT uh, bar and uh, killed in Orlando and yeah, 50 individuals and hurt 50. Yes, they probably were opposed, homophobic in nature. I think so. It, but they also wanted to kill Americans. But they wanted to send us a message. And that message is, you better be afraid. What did uh, Benjamin Franklin say? If you give up uh, your liberty for security, you lose both your liberty and security. If because of those murders that took place, we relinquish what's, well, let me see if I got it here. Oh, yeah. 
This is the no. Constitution. I always carry this no, with me isn't to, that to remind me that every piece of legislation has to relate to protecting our freedoms and liberties. If we give up the freedom and liberties here for our security, you know what they're going to do next time? Kill 100 people. They're going to say, it works. The more we kill, the more we blow up, the more we involve freedom and liberty and destroy it. No, we've got to keep our freedoms and liberties. We've got to make sure we protect this as best I can. But they win if we show them that we're going to walk into people's houses without a writ or without a judge giving us a license to do that, if we put people on lists, if we follow them around and spy, uh, that's not America. And if they're able to change America and its freedoms and liberties, that, that's a very bad thing. Okay. So I got to, because I, wanna, I don't want to ignore the animal part. Oh, that's very important. Are you still going to have animal advocacy? Because you, you were the head oh, of it. Absolutely. So you, but the Senate really didn't seem... Well, to have a role in the We've got Phil advocacy. Boyle and oh, uh, Phil Boyle, right. uh, Savino, Serino is there. She, Sue she, Serino. Sue Serino. Yeah, okay. And uh, probably be the three of us, and we'll get three people from the uh, assembly. assembly. Now, and then we'll have uh, the seventh annual animal advocacy day. And what's the importance of that? We have to be representatives for the most powerful voices those who have very little voices, and those who have no voices, but they're important to protect. They have barks, right, yeah. and, and meows. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is that most people understand that's a bridge crime. When people hurt animals, yes. it's on the FBI list as an A-level indicator that they're going to go on to hurt human beings. Yes. Son of Sam, Ted Bundy, Dahmer, the Columbine kids. I wouldn't be surprised if this kooky guy who did these terrible murders recently had a whole history. Go on to hurt people. They're the serial murderers. So it's very important to get these people off the streets, maybe provide some psychological evaluation and treatment. But we have a great bill we got to get passed next year. That's the statewide registry. Mm -hmm. Because if they're convicted of this, they go on that registry. Look, it's not a part of our Constitution that you have a right to own an animal or abuse it. It's mm -hmm. a privilege to own an animal. They give us unconditional love. Mm -hmm. Look at the service they do in our canine units for law enforcement. Right. They're great service dogs. They go into nursing homes. They and help the blind. And now they can be buddies with diabetes. Diabetes, ch children with diabetes, because they could sniff, when indicate. In, yeah. They could indicate when the blood sugar levels are high. Yes. Yeah, and low on caution. insulin. Yeah. It gives off a certain scent from your body when you when you need some insulin. And they uh, several children have been saved. I talked yeah, to several parents it. about That's that. Yeah. yeah. And why? And now we had a, a retiring assemblyman, Steve Katz, on the program. Yeah, you know, now you would think someone with that last name would definitely be at the animal. <laughs> well, he, he is a veterinarian, but, and he's a veterinarian. But why? He says he's never been invited, and he says because I asked him. To about animal advocacy day. Yeah, oh, and everybody's says, invited. Well, he was very upset that he feels that he was never really offered the invitation to be at animal advocacy day. Right, Rabbi? He was on the show. He was yeah. talking about that. He was very... Maybe he uh, wanted to be a speaker. Maybe yeah. he wanted to be a frontliner. Yeah, definitely. If you, if you want to be a frontliner, it doesn't make any difference if you're a veterinarian or not. You've got to sponsor bills. You've got to stand up for them. You've mm -hmm. got to speak out for them. It's not a question of just making money off them. He, you know, now uh, he's got marijuana for dogs. So. Well, pets. <laughs> Marijuana he had many pets. marijuana for cars, too, when yeah. he was in a car with one. But that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but he's I, a good guy. I enjoy him. And, uh, yeah, past he worked hard. <laughs> but, okay. But, anyway, I just thought I'd ask you, because when people see his show, I wanted them to get a reply from you. Well, every, he was invited. Everybody was invited. In fact, if he wanted to speak, he could have asked yeah. me. I would have let him speak. As right. a veterinarian, I'm sure he would have a lot to offer. Okay. It's yeah. his loss. Yeah. Okay. So you have other... Legislation that's really in the last few minutes. Okay, you relate to the penalty for an offense of predatory sexual assault against a child. Yeah. What bill is that about? What's that about? Uh, that's a piece of legislation. Uh, uh, one of the bills, which is uh, a co-bill with that, is the bullying bill we have. Right. And what, what that says, if there's any bullying of a sexual nature in a school, a physical nature, an emotional nature, the parents have to be notified. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. Under the uh, Dignity for All Students Act, there's nothing in that bill that says uh, if, if anybody's child is bullied in a school, that the principal, the administrator, has to call the parents and let them know that this has happened with their kids. Mm -hmm. Now, you may have seen recently uh, out here in the Capitol region, a child just committed suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a 14-year-old child was bullied. Mm -hmm. Parents never knew the extent that he was bullied. In fact, it was in the front page of the Times Union. He wrote a suicide note that mm -hmm. I can't take it anymore. Right. I can't stand up for this. Now, I believe, 
I could be in a room with the 19 and a half million people in New York State and every parent, if I said, would you like to know if your child is being bullied in any way in school? Absolutely. Raise your hand if you wouldn't or raise your hand if you would ask that question. I don't think anybody would raise their hand and say, no, I don't want to know if my child is being bullied in school. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Why should I uh, allow and believe a principal or vice principal or school so administration? who's opposing your bill? Uh, Mr. Uh, Donnelly. Donnelly. Assemblyman Donnelly, yeah. O'Donnell? O'Donnell, yeah. Because uh -huh. he is the uh, head of corrections, and uh, he carried the original bill. And uh, his point of view is that, uh, well, it may be uh, related to homosexuality or lesbianism, and they may be being abused of that, and their parents should know about that. Well, oh, if their parents should know about that. Because they're not out yet. Yeah. Oh. If their parents should know about that, well, why, why would you think the vice principal would be better at dealing with that? Who, who's to say he's uh, more open to these type of things? Interesting. You know, and, and it's also discriminatory against heterosexual uh, kids. Because, okay, if that's a point uh, of concern for parents of those type of kids who have that particular right. uh, sexual orientation. It doesn't reflect anything about heterosexual kids and their abuse, so they should at least be reported right. because that issue doesn't stand for them. But to not report uh, to any parents, and uh, I think at some point you have to trust the, now the you parents. you said that Danny O'Donnell carried the original bill. Yeah. So now when you go to the Senate, can you co-sponsor a compromise bill with him? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do that now with him. But wouldn't that be something? All of a sudden, you get your opponent. Uh, yeah, I showed I showed him the issue on the front page. He goes, "I'll research this. I'll look." I said, "Yeah." I, I said, "I think it's important uh, to okay. let parents know when this happens." Well, go for it. Well, we'll do All it. Right, thank fight you. Up. Go ahead. Assemblyman, as yeah. it is now, That's Assemblyman right. Tedisco. Thank you for being on the Rabbi. My pleasure. You and we wish you Martin, a lot of success. Thank you. With good health yes. in the future. Continued success. Well, we hope we get to the Senate. And one more thing why it's no, important. Oh, we're out.